This tutorial is about the use of the Poplog editor VED. <coughs> a previous one explained how VED could be used with mouse in addition to keyboard in circumstances where 2D graphical capabilities are available. This one is about situations where only the textual interface can be used namely a keyboard and of course the screen on which things are displayed. And here I have a picture of a keyboard. Um, the main thing I want to emphasize here is that there are different sorts of keys. There are the alphabetic keys which are in the middle of the keyboard. Um, then there are the numeric keys. And uh, at the top there are function keys and then a whole variety of additional function keys on the right in different configurations on different keyboards. The tutorial will try to show how you can use the editor VED even when these other function keys are not available, either because you're using a reduced keyboard, for instance on a laptop, or because for some reason the roles of those keys are taken over by something else, for instance the computer desktop. Um, so in this presentation the only keys that will be required are the normal typing keys. Uh, tab can be used but it's not um, going to be mentioned. Uh, spacebar of course will be used and um, two other keys, namely the escape key and the control key. The control key is like the shift key in that it is held down and while it is held down another key can be pressed. So if you type Z then something will happen. If you type control Z a different signal will be sent to the computer. Um, the other key that's used a lot in controlling the editor is the escape key, ESC. In fact, on my computer I swap escape and this thing because I use escape so much that I having it up there gives me too much strain and I swap control with caps lock because I use control a lot. So I have control there and escape there. But that's uh, by the way. Um, so almost everything will be done with all these alphanumeric keys, uh, space and if necessary tab, and then escape and control. <coughs> and then this uh, key, which is here labeled enter, but uh, should probably really be labeled return, because when it's pressed it'll start a new line. There's another key on the numeric keypad called enter, which if available is useful for poplog. Um, and it's distinguished from this one. So in Poplog uh, documentation, the one on the extreme right is called Enter, and this one is called Return. The Delete key can also be used, although sometimes that depends how th depending on how things are set up. The Delete key and the Backspace key may do the same things. For now, I will just assume that each of them deletes the character to the left of the cursor, although sometimes they're set up so that the backspace deletes the character last typed uh, to the left of the cursor, to be more precise, and the delete key deletes the character under the cursor, the editor cursor. But those are details. Uh, this program I'm showing you is called XKeyCaps and it can be used to find out what your keyboard does, but I'm now going to leave it typing quit. So I'll now start the VED editor and I'll read in a tutorial file called Essential Keys. So I give the command VED Essential Keys. I've set things up so that by default the editor starts taking only half of the panel that's available to me, the half of the um, external window in which I'm working. Uh, I can type Escape W and then it expands to take up the whole thing. Uh, Sometimes it's useful to have it taking only half because the other half is used for output or for another file. Uh, this, this document, the Essential Keys document, will be available online in the Poplog, um, on the Poplog website 
under the teach directory and it's called essential keys and it'll be added to the poplog package as a file that can be read by giving the teach essential keys command so I'm going to be talking about using VED the poplog editor in dumb terminal mode and by that I mean you can only access it through a keyboard so some of this file talks about other ways of accessing VED but I'm just going to jump to the part of the file so you might be in this position when you log through to a machine running poplog for instance if you log through from a Windows machine to a remote Linux machine or um, if you're using a Linux machine at home as I often do and log through to a, a Linux machine in my department I will use SSH and although I can use the graphical facilities remotely over the internet it's sometimes a little slow and I just work in dumb terminal mode Um, I'm also assuming that uh, you can, you may have to work without function keys, as I explained previously. Um, in fact, very often the function keys will work, and by default, the uh, keyboard used with a PC will be interpreted so that, for instance, the function key F1 uh, will be used to mark a portion of a file. For instance, if I press it now F1 on my keyboard I get a mark on the left and if I go down I press F2 I get the uh, end of the marked range but I'll show how you can do that even if the function keys do not work so as I explained earlier we're going to talk about the ordinary keys uh, that are used for typing and also the control key and the escape key and here is some notation. This little symbol, the up arrow or hat, uh, when typed before a capital letter, means use that letter with the con use that key with the control key down. So, for example, uh, this little hat G means use control G. Hold down control and then tap the G key. The control key should go down first and should remain down until after you press the other one. Similarly, control F is written with this symbol followed by an F. And what they do in VED is defined below. The escape key will be represented here and in a lot of poplog documentation as ESC, sometimes with square brackets to uh, indicate, uh, not square brackets, angle brackets like that, to indicate that the three letters are not to be typed but one button instead. But in this file, it's just uh, represented without that. So that means you press that key and release it, and then type something else. So for example, here we have the up arrow E, which means control E. So if I do that, I press control and then type E, the cursor jumps to the end of the line. If I do control A, it jumps to the beginning of the line, like that. Um, if I type escape E then something different happens escape E uh, types up there only editing one file that's because the escape E command uh, tells you which files you have in the in the uh, editor and gives you the chance to select one of them so for example if I were to read in another teach file teach lists and another teach file teach stack I now have only two visible windows here but I've got three files for in the in the editor so if I type escape E I did that when my cursor was in this window it says I've got three files stack lists and essential keys and if I, I can then type the number to select the one I want to go to, I'll type the 3 to go back to where I was. So I'm in the Teach Essential Keys uh, file. That's now in the upper half of the screen. I'll type Escape W to make it take up the whole screen, the whole window. So that's the difference between Control E, which means go to the end of a line, Control E, and Escape E, 
escape E which brings up a little menu of files available. Uh, when there are too many files to fit on the line uh, then you'll get another VED buffer displayed in which you can see what the files are and choose one. Anyway, I will type 1 to stay in this file. Um, escape F moves forward one character at a time so there I am showing you the VED cursor, text cursor, and if I type escape F it sorry it jumps not one character but to the start of the next word escape F jumps to the next word escape F escape F escape F and we can compare that with escape lowercase b which moves back a word at a time so escape b escape b escape b the comma is treated as one word because in pop 11 it doesn't join up with what's before it escape b escape b escape b. the period is treated as one word so if i do escape b it goes just past the dot and then stops so escape F goes forward, escape B goes back with it with lowercase. On the other hand, if you use uppercase, escape F, that can be used to do what's called file name completion. So whereas for control, there's no difference between control lowercase g and control uppercase g, there's just control g. With escape, you can have escape lowercase g and escape uppercase g and we'll see later that that distinction is useful and likewise with f. What's file name completion? Well um, if you want to read in a file and you can't remember its whole name you can s start uh, typing in part of the name for example I may have in the current directory a number of files whose names start gr and if I type G R and then escape capital F there's nothing there. Uh, let me just see what the files are in this directory. Um, there are several starting with N so let's try N escape capital F and it says I can have new essential.ogv or new xterm. Um, I could then choose the file, uh, the, f the, the name of the file that I want by typing the number 1 or 2. Um, if I type 2, then it completes the, um, the word in there. If I type NE and do escape capital F again, I could type 1 and it completes the file name with the other option. So escape capital F is used for final file name completion. If you remember part of a file name you can type that initial part and then you can type um, the uh, es escape capital F. You can also use a pattern like asterisk uh, IA asterisk and then type escape capital F and it'll tell you that well, there are all these things that include IA you can choose the one you want for instance if I type 2 I get the essential keys file name uh, because typing escape capital F is a bit tedious because you have to type escape and then hold the shift key down and type F uh, there is an option to type escape 3 instead so that's a little easier to type anyway here is a table I'm going to use escape W to expand the window a table of commands that can be given just by means of escape and control characters or combinations um, which enable you to do many or almost all of the things that you will need to do in the editor there are other commands which are not listed here because they're more specialized and of course if the function keys work then many all the all the most common things that are listed here can also be done by pressing a single function key instead of using a combination of keys 
So for example, if I want to give a command to the editor, like a command to read another teach file, I can use control G, like this, which puts the cursor up there, or I could have used the enter key, um, which is on the far right of my keyboard. Um, having done that, I can ask for teach until, and then, I, well, I got a help file on until there. Anyway, I'm going to quit that, escape Q, and then escape W to expand this window again. So, control G to enter a command. If you've started typing a command, for instance, I'll do control G, and I'll start typing help and now I can't remember what I want to do next I may decide I want to abort that help command I can then type escape control G which will just escape control G take the cursor back into the text file so that that command is just left there uncompleted and I might later come go back and complete it by typing control G again um, and then I can um, do whatever I was going to do before. Escape, Control G, takes me back. If there is a command on the uh, on the um, status line, on the command line, status line, same thing up there, um, and you want to repeat it, then you can type Escape, Return. It'll do whatever was there. So, for example, um, if I have uh, done a search command I want to search which I can do with the slash I want to search for something that has up uh, I can type in the slash forward slash up to search and it the editor goes to this up if I want to redo that command I can do escape return and it searches for the next up escape return and it searches for the next up and so on. So escape return will just redo the command that's on the command line without your having to really type the command line or go back up there and press the return key. Okay so those are some of the commands that involve the use of the command line. It's called the command line because you can give commands up there. It's called the status line because some of the status is shown on that line. For instance, it tells me here I'm editing the file essential keys. It also tells me that I'm on line 145. Now here's a bunch of control key commands that move the editor cursor. Control P and N, move it up or down. Control P, Control P, Control P, moves up. Control N, Control N, Control N, moves it down. And the mnemonic there is that you have up ending in a P and down ending in a N. That may or may not help you remember that control P goes up, control N goes down. Um, the next two are control B and control F. And you can think of that as back and forward. Uh, so moving the cursor back or left can be done with control B, control B, control B, control B, and then to go in the opposite direction to the right or forward, control F, control F, control F, and so on. And these commands have names over here. Um, these are just mnemonics. And I've got NB for commands that are used very frequently. These four can also be done with the arrow keys if the arrow keys are working uh, properly on your keyboard. So the up arrow key makes the cursor go up, the down arrow key makes the cursor go down, right arrow key makes it go right, left arrow key goes left. So you'll only need these control commands if you don't have arrow keys on your keyboard or if for some reason they're not working. It's sometimes quite useful to move, to make big moves and each of these four moves can be preceded with escape and then the uh, move will be enlarged. So for instance, as control P moves up one line, but escape control P, which I'm not going to do, jumps up, whoops, I um, uh, did the wrong thing there, apologies, escape 
control P escape control P took the cursor right to the top there uh, escape control N will go down several lines escape control N escape control N so you can see it can move down several lines at a time escape control B moves left several a, a chunk of a line and or back escape control F moves forward or right a chunk of a line so for instance if I do escape control F escape control F the cursor jumped quite a bit down here I can then go up with escape control P it jumped up to there escape control P and oh, that was just control P escape control P jumped up there and then I go left a big jump escape control B escape control B so whatever these do escape in front of it makes the jump bigger and the names are uh, com of the functions are composed of the names of the previous functions with lots added on the end that's char up or car up lots car up lots char down or car down and then we have char down lots and so on <coughs> excuse me um, intermediate size jumps are a word at a time and um, I mentioned those previously when explaining how the escape character works so escape B goes back or left one word at a time escape B escape B escape B escape B and when you get to the beginning of the line if you do escape B again it goes back to the previous line escape B likewise escape F goes forward a word, a line, a word at a time escape F and if you're at the end of a line escape F goes to the beginning of the next line then escape F goes forward a word at a time escape F escape F you <coughs> may find the rules uh, sometimes a little bit odd but it doesn't matter because you can just repeat the uh, commands to get the cursor to exactly where you want um, sometimes combining the, the uh, word size jumps with the individual character jumps if you're looking at a big file you can only see a part of it in the window so it's sometimes useful to be able to move the whole file a screen full up or down at a time and um, if the page up and page down keys work you can use them so I'm going to hit page down page down and then page up and page up and those work for me but I can instead use escape I can use control V to go down control V it first moves the cursor to the bottom of the window then the next time will take me down the screen for control V control V and then I can go escape V to go which took the cursor up to the top and escape V to go up another lot escape V another lot and so on so escape V screen up control V screen down this is not necessarily going to be easy to remember but you'll get used to whatever subset you use most you can also do a big jump to the left edge of the screen or to the right edge of the screen or to the left edge of the text on the line or to the right edge of the uh, edge of the text on the line so for instance control a goes to the left edge of the screen whereas control <coughs> um, escape control e escape control e goes to the right edge of the screen control a to the beginning escape control e to the right if I just use control e not escape control e then it goes to the right of the text and that's what you need more often you hardly ever need to go right to the end of the screen but you often need to go to the end of a line in order to continue typing something and um, escape control a which we have here will move not to the beginning of the line as control a does but to the beginning of text in the line so if I type escape control a it takes the cursor to that point um, control J is useful to get to the beginning of the following line so control J 
takes me to the beginning of the next line, control J. If I'm already at the beginning of a line, that's the same as just going down the line, which is control N. Now I mentioned previously that it's often useful to mark a range and if the function keys F1 and F2 are working properly with your uh, VED setup then you can use F1 to mark the beginning of a range of text and F2 to mark the end of a range but if they're not working you can use escape lowercase m to start to mark the start of a range beginning of a range and escape uppercase m to mark the end of a range so if I move the cursor up to there and I type escape little m then that will be the beginning of a range and I can bring it back down here and type escape uppercase m and it will make that the end of the range without changing the beginning of the range if I do escape little m again then that makes the current line the start of the range so I do escape little m and so all this previous text becomes unmarked and the only thing that's marked is where the cursor is. Um, if you have a program file and you've got a procedure definition uh, then you can mark the current procedure. So for example if I do enter which is control G um, show lib river that will get me a library file then I can search down it for procedures okay so he has a procedure called start and we don't need to worry about what it's doing uh, but it starts with define and then it ends with end define and I could mark that by putting the cursor at the top typing escape little m putting the cursor at the bottom typing escape capital M. Instead I can type escape capital C and that just marks the whole of that procedure. And there are quite a lot of commands that work on just a procedure uh, including compiling a procedure and formatting a, a procedure. But escape capital C just marks it. So if I go to the next one I do escape um, capital C and that marks that one. Even though part of it is vis invisible below the bottom of the window still got marked. So that's escape capital C. Um, if you've already got, I'm now going back to this other window where this um, procedure has been marked. If I want to move the cursor to the beginning of the marked range then I can use this command escape lowercase g, escape lowercase g sorry I typed escape uppercase G, escape lowercase g moves the cursor to the beginning of a marked range and escape uppercase moves the cursor to the end of the range so the ways of moving the cursor which depend on which portion of the text you've already marked let's come back in here I typed escape x to switch between these files escape x takes me back to that Libriba file, escape x takes me back to this file. Um, so, so far we've done a lot of things about moving around, marking ranges, um, and we come now to deleting characters. Control R can be used to delete one character at a time, so if I put it on that C and I type Control R, it deletes the C, and everything to the right moves left so there's now a T under the uh, cursor. If I type Control R again it'll delete the T and there's an E there. I can now Control R and delete the E and so on. So Control R will delete one character and its summary has the name dot delete because it's just where the cursor is. The delete key, del, or the backspace key um, is different in so far as when I press that the cursor deletes the, the the character to the left of the cursor is deleted so there's an A to the left of the cursor and I press the space backspace or delete key the little A gets deleted and everything moves left including the text cursor I press the delete key again and so on so with the control R things get deleted but the text cursor stays where it is 
Uh, what have I got? Control R. Uh, whereas with the uh, backspace or the lead character, things just move left, including the cursor. So that's the difference between Control R and L. Control W does bigger deletions. So, for example, I'm sure if I go back to there and I type Control W, that will delete the word to the left of the cursor, which in this case is range, Control W. And now the word marked is to the left of the cursor. I can type Control W again, and marked will go. Um, that's Control W. I can delete the whole line to the left of the cursor using Control U. In fact, there are various ways of doing that, but I just demonstrate Control U goes deletes everything to the beginning of the line, but stuff to the right of the cursor isn't deleted, it's just shifted left. That's quite useful when you're partway through a line. You just want to go back, delete to the beginning, and then restart the beginning of the line. Now, there's a whole collection of delete commands that start with Control k um, notice, incidentally, that only some of these commands have an NB next to them. I'm mentioning the others, but the ones that you need most are labeled NB. So I've already given you a command to delete word to the left of the cursor, but it's also possible to do that using Control K, Control B, instead of just Control W. Um, it would be tedious if you always had to do delete words to the left is so common it would be tedious you always had to do this complex command control k control b so that's why control w delete a word is made available uh, occasionally you want to delete a word to the right of the cursor instead of to the left so not the thing you've just typed but something that happens to be on the right in that case you can use control k control f so if i put this cursor there if I type Control K, Control F, it should delete the word to the right of the cursor. Control K, Control F, and now there's another word to the right of the cursor. Control K, Control F. So that's deleting stuff to the right. Uh, if the function keys are all working, then you can use F7 and F8 instead of the, that combination. But uh, for the minimal situation when you can't use function keys, these things will work. Control K, Control B to left or backwards. Control K, Control F, delete word to the right or forwards. Uh, control K, Control A means delete right to the beginning of the line. That's the same as Control W over there and control K, control E means to leak to the right of the cursor. So if I put it after the word people there, and I do control K, control E, then everything to the right of the cursor has disappeared. You can also delete the whole of the current line by using control K twice. So I'll put the cursor over there, control K, control K, and that line disappeared and everything was pulled up. You can also delete a marked range. So, for instance, I'm going to the other window and I've got this procedure marked. I can do Control K, Control D, and that marked range disappears. There's another way of doing that, which is indicated here. You can use Enter and D. So, if I mark a few lines over here, I can press enter or control G and then type D for delete and that's gone. I can also get it back by typing Y for yank. I've already shown you that when I'm using a split screen version of VED I can toggle between half and full screen window with escape W. So I'll do that now, escape W, and that means that the current file uses up the whole of the window that I've got here. If I do it again, it goes back to using only half the window. Although it shows me what was there before, if I 
uh, type escape X, it switches to the previous file and shows me that instead. So escape X switches between two files, uh, the current one and the last one you were editing. It's called swap files. Escape W is called set window. If you have several files in the buff buffer, as I mentioned previously, you can find out what they are by typing escape E. And now we find I've got essential keys, which is the file I'm editing, and several more. But I'll stay with the one I'm editing. I can either hit enter or return or type the number one. And I previously showed that the escape capital F or escape three can be used to complete file names. If I have a part of a file name somewhere typed either in the command line or in the editor buffer and I type escape 3 or escape capital F it'll give me options for completing that file and if I want to quit the file I'm in escape lowercase q will do that so if I go do escape x that takes me to that river.p file if I type escape q I quit that file although the text that was there remains visible for the time being but if I do escape X to see what the next file in the editor buffer is, I get the teach stack file, not the river file again. So river file is gone and if I type escape E it's no longer shown in the options. So you can quit a file with escape Q. If it's one of your own files and you've been editing it and you've made some changes then it'll ask you if you really want to quit. With, or do, would you rather write the file and you can then specify what you want to do I mentioned that there are commands for doing things on a procedure and one of them was escape capital C to mark the procedure escape lowercase c will compile that procedure so for example if I have a little procedure define fact for factorial of x if x equals naught then one else x times fac x minus one and if some of some people reading this will recognize that as a definition of factorial. So the cursor's in there if I type escape C it'll compile it and if there's an error message if there's something wrong I'll get an error message. In fact, there wasn't anything wrong, so I compiled it, and now I can test it by typing fact 3 and the print error, and then escape D, which is compile the current line. So escape C compiles the current procedure, escape D compiles the current line, which I'll now do with this, and it printed out that the factorial of 3 was 6. If I ask it for the factorial of 33, it gives me a bigger number. Um, Control D will also compile, but it will compile the whole of a marked range. So you might have a procedure and a command, both co uh, in the marked range, and then if you do Control D, it'll do both. It'll compile the procedure and that command. So I've just done that. Or if I have a number of commands, like uh, fact 33, fact 44 I mark the range containing both of them and type control D then both of those commands are given and as you can see the factorial of 44 is much bigger than the factorial of 33 there is also a collection of commands for getting at documentation and one family of those is to use the enter command control G and then you type teach something or help something or uh, doc something or show lib uh, show lib will show you a f library file rather than a documentation file but very often within a documentation file there will be um, a word and you may think it's the name of something or other and you want to find out uh, if there's documentation on it, well you can put the cursor next to it and type escape H. So I've put the cursor next to it, get sys file, and I type escape H, 
and it gets me a help file which I'm not going to um, go through but actually that's an explanation of how Escape H works um, sometimes there are d uh, cross references which start with one of teach, ref, lib or help or doc or something and uh, in that case when you type escape h what you get will depend on what's on the, w on the left so let's go to the end of this file uh, which I'm going to do um, by um, pressing the end button and here we can see there's a help fed keys file so if I put the cursor between the two and the asterisk is there as a guide and type escape h it'll get me the help fed keys um, and I made the mistake of typing escape h with the key next to the help and I got help help so I'm going to do escape q to get rid of that escape x to come back to the previous file uh, there are some commands, uh, some forms of documentation which are present in two forms. For instance, there's a teach matches file and a help matches f file. The teach matches file is more elementary, so if I type escape H between teach and matches, I get the teach matches file coming up. I'm not going to quit that and I go down and put the cursor between help and matches and type escape H and now I get the help matches file so POP11 has a lot of cross references of different sorts where there's a label like teach or help or show lib if it's to get you um, a li program library file and then something on the right and these little asterisks are there to enable you to find those cross references quickly because if you type escape N it goes to the next asterisk so I typed escape n in that file and it jumped to this point if I type escape n it'll jump to another one so in pop11 and poplog documentation files there are a lot of asterisks whose sole function is to help you quickly get to a cross reference to another documentation file I'm now going to type escape q to leave that thing and that brought me back to my essential keys file so um, I'm now near the end of the file but I'll go back to where I was before by typing enter that's control G and a G to go that'll take me to the table of contents and now I'll go to the table of key combination by redoing the G command which is escape return that takes me to the table of key com combinations escape W to expand the window and um, we were uh, at a point where I was saying there are various um, uh, commands to do with uh, mark of range so escape M marks the start of range, escape capital M marks the end of range, escape C marks the current procedure um, I left out escape capital G um, this will take you to the beginning of sorry there's an escape little g which I'm going to do now it takes you to the beginning of the marked range escape capital G takes you to the end of the marked range and there are lots of stuff in this file that I have uh, m uh, messed up because I was using the delete commands earlier so here is where we were after this definition of factorial which I typed in I should have done it in a separate file but um, I was lazy and didn't we had some com compile commands and then there's the help command escape h which also does teach or f or other things depending on what else is in the same line immediately before the thing you're trying to get information on and I mentioned that escape n takes you to the next asterisk escape n escape n and so on now I've already 
shown you how you can do things with multiple buffers by using the escape E command to get a menu of buffers available and there's a lot more about that in the teach buffers file so I'm not going to repeat that now um, if you are in a situation where the function keys like F1, F2, F3 and so on do work you can find out what they are and how they work by using the help vidx term keys file I'll type escape H and um, there's some information in there but if I go to the keyboard actions line control G to go to that section we get little maps showing I'm going to do escape W to expand to the whole window so this shows you what you can do with function keys F1 to F7 and there are two options one is the key on its own the other is escape followed by the key so F1 on its own marks the beginning of a range F2 marks the end of a range and so on but if you use escape F1 that marks the top of a file and escape F2 marks the end of a file I'm not going to go through all the details because I just wanted to indicate that this is the file help with X term keys that will show you what you can do with function keys um, this portion shows you what you can do with the arrow keys which you probably already know character up and down and so on and then there's some more keys that you can use and this one tells you what happens if you use the escape key and then the key so for instance escape followed by character left moves left a lot escape followed by the down arrow moves down a lot and so on and in some situations the numeric key bad keys can be used for convenient actions but I'm not going to go into that now so I'll go back to the previous uh, file by quitting this one escape Q and um, mention that there's some more tutorials here including teach minived which will give a more complete tutorial introduction to things you can do with the editor and um, help fed keys it gives uh, a more complete summary of things you can do with the keyboard but that's enough for now